that part is tough for me to get to get behind like so in that scenario i can manifest that two grand but it might be like way down the road it may not be in time for me to pay my rent versus if i'm manifesting my new life that i'm on board with because you can do the work meditation and stuff and it will align you etc you know i don't know I think- so, I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying that part's hard for me to process. That yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's why your struggle to manifest it. It's simple as that. Fair. Right? Fair. If, I, if you just watch back what you've just said there, you, you, from, a, from a, you know, we, I know we're just using it as an example, but you, you, were, you were using your self-limiting belief system to, to, to confirm that manifesting 2K instantly is just not going to happen. Right? <laughs> um, yeah? Yes. This is what I was saying. People pay good money for this shit right here. Welcome to my third podcast. Today we are talking to my British soul brother, Matt Cook. He is a spiritual coach, a life coach, a manifestation coach, and I ran into him, or rather I met him through the Tiketake world, which is where it seems like a few of these things are coming from, or not seems like, that's where a lot of these are coming from. He's already garnered or amassed a, a large following on there, and at some point he followed me back, and I was like, oh shit, Matt followed me. And so then I opened the dialogue, and uh, He's like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do a podcast with you. I'm like, you don't know what you're getting into, man. You don't have any idea what you're getting into. No, I'm just kidding. We go into some some deep, deep woo-woo stuff. Really fun content to, to go into. Manifestation, spirituality, what happens when we die, all of those things. I hope you enjoy as much as I did and as much as my British soul brother, Matt, did. I'm here. Now you're there. I'm quite close up, actually. So, so that's again. not your uh that's not your real background. That's not your real lamp back there. No, it's not. It's because um actually Google I've got a green screen, obviously, but Google have uh they've just selected that image for me actually. So how'd you change it, do you know? The um I just started with uh I just I just started and and then it was there. Um oh, I don't know. No worries, uh, I mean it's not that bad actually of a green screen of a background is it i suppose no no unless no, you I'm think just, it's no no i'm just messing with you it's all good <laughs> you don't you don't um, want people to see where you really live i'm just kidding <laughs> no it's just because i've got nothing nice on the walls that i'm at so i've got this huge green screen and in zoom i have this uh really cool sort of background of this office but yeah this is this is fine isn't it i won't mess totally with good it's all great to see you anyway mate it's good to be on with you dude i'm so excited to talk to you man um it's it's crazy like when you start gaining traction um i'm getting the tinglies you know you get the tinglies when like you're tapped into source a little bit i'm getting the tinglies when i talk about stuff like this man but um you know you start growing and you start meeting people like you know if i was just you know back in my infancy stage whatever of doing tiktoks and i had like a thousand people the, the this us having this meeting might not have happened but because i had reached a point and then you happen to see mine, you're like, oh, he's a cool, dude, you know? But if I just had some little riffraff videos on there, we may have never had this this conversation, you know? And, like, my um two my two other podcasts, so you're my fourth um going, going forward, and it's going to be something that I do quite a bit now that I'm, like, meeting all these cool people, you know? Like, I just, you know, and it's, it's, for, it's for to share, it's to share, you know, good stuff with people whoever wants to see it you know if i affect one person then that's fantastic you know um but when you followed me back i was like oh shit you know <laughs> and then and then you said cool and man i'm i'm super pumped to to hop on with you and talk about whatever i mean i'd like to talk a little bit about manifestation because that's what you talk about so you wanted to say real quick this is matt cook obviously he is a uh spiritual coach slash manifestation coach and if yep. i'm not mistaken your your big catapult was losing your mother is that right yes it was so um this whole sort of spiritual awakening and becoming a coach really did start in july 2017 really you know mm-hmm. falling into the uh the, the realms of spirituality my 
my mum died of cancer in uh, 2017. And at the time, Phil, I was just, you know, um, your standard sort of corporate person, didn't believe in the afterlife at all or spirituality. And really all I was bothered about, apart from obviously family and my wife, was just working hard and making money and buying material things. That was really all I was about. You know, and I, I at the time I was um, I was in I was a real estate agent and um, in the company I worked in, I was the youngest manager in that in that firm uh, by like 10 years. I was 25 at the time. And um, so really, like, that's all I was bothered about. And then then my mom died and I was like, wow, I need to I need to ask more questions. I'm so curious and I want to learn Like, wh what happens now. Now she's no longer here. Like what is it that, that happens and I and for, for a year I feel like I just had this sort of going around in my sort of my mind sort of you know what 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 else is out there but I remember one conversation we had when she was in um her hospice literally days before she passed away and she turned to me and she said you know Matt just just make sure that you you spend time with Coruscant who's my wife um be happy you know, smile, travel the world, create memories, because when you're in my position, you'll realise how precious life is. And for a, for an entire year, that was sort of going through my mind, you know, what can I do uh, to, to sort of create that life, you know, be that person and not sort of have regret, you know, because she worked her whole life to, to one day retire and, and live a best life. And she never got to do that though, because she died at 50, you know. So that was sort of the start of the, the whole awakening, really. Mm -hmm. And so what was your entry to, so I can first off relate to you, obviously, I don't know which ones of my, you know, it's weird, like with TikTok, you never know what video you're going to see of someone's, but um, <laughs> I I lost my mom and my father and my dog and, and a friend and like, it's it's been crazy past couple of years for me, but that was like the trigger point for my spiritual awakening too, um, you know, and as far as manifestation is concerned, like, you know, I watched The Secret and I was like touched by the message of The Secret. But, you know, it, it seemed to pitch the idea of just get in a good place and say that you want a Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow there's a Lamborghini outside. And I'm like, well, I just yeah. don't think that that's how the shit works. But like I'm with it, like I get it. But like my vantage point of manifestation is you know, you, you, you get in a good vibration, you try to be more, in a, or you work to become more in a good vibration by inner healing and doing those sorts of things, meditation, et cetera. And then you align yourself with a vision of the future that, you know, is fulfilling and et cetera. And you work towards it and you can manifest stuff that way. But it's like, if I say I want to manifest, you know, a certain type of house with blue shutters or something, it might not have blue shutters. It might have orange shutters. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I believe that it's like straight up exactly on the line. And I kind of went off on a tangent here, but I wanted to ask you, like, so you went through that kind of, or you started your awakening process. What put you on the track of manifestation? So in, um, in September, 2018, I was under so much pressure and stress at work still in my real estate job. My wife's grandma encouraged me to have reflexology and, um, I never, I'd never had reflexology before. I didn't really like people touching my feet, <laughs> you know. And mm -hmm. anyway, I met this guy and um, never met him before in my life. He just knew my name. That was it. And so he said, so Matt, um, tell me who you are. And I said to him, I'm 26 year old real estate, the youngest manager in the company. And he stopped me there and he said, sorry, Matt, I didn't ask what you did for a living. I asked who you are. Mm -hmm. And I was like, who am I? like who, who, who is the person behind that sort of shell and and this then led me down this sort of like route of wanting to just understand like what my purpose was like who am i like who's this person and that's when i then from like youtube just landed on self-help uh landed on you know um landed on an opportunity to try and you know find my purpose and then this coach at the time in 2018 said said that you know, he he put a lot of his success down to the law of attraction and manifestation, and I'd never heard of that before at all. Then, so coming on to four years now, and um, he he encouraged me to 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 watch the secret on YouTube, and that was the, the first kind of stepping stone into it. But for me, 
being a very curious person, always asking questions, but wanting to understand if I ask a question and someone gives me the answer, how did they get to the answer? I remember watching The Secret and thinking, this, this stuff's cool, but I don't really believe it actually. I want to understand like the, the how, like the foundation of like manifestation. Yeah. If that makes sense. And so then did you just do more research, like seeing more, reading more about it, or did you just start uh, trial and error doing it in your own world? Doing it in my own world to start with. I think we all we all go down a, a journey. I think one one book that um, changed my life was The Surrender Experiment by Michael A. Singer, you I've know, and that. um absolutely incredible but my wife's just finished it as well and she said you know she loved it and you know if you look back everything's a journey and you, you meant to go on this sort of path for a reason aren't you and for me you know it was like um you know starting with the secret bob proctor esther and jerry hicks you know um the vortex and all, all this and it was all sort of the same stuff really and I, I tried to practice it i felt like i had a good grasp and understanding of it but it, I still had this bug of like, but how? But but how are people like instantly manifesting or or, or making stuff come you know come to fruition? And then in 2019, I came across across my all time sort of like hero, um, and that person I even have his book here, Jody Spencer. Oh so, yeah, I love that book. Got that same book. Yeah. So, so to me, this is always like I carry it everywhere. It's like a bible to me, literally that that particular book. And what I love about Joe's work um, was you know, how common people are doing the uncommon, you know, how they're becoming supernatural, how, how they can go to his events with chronic disease, cancer, and in seven days be healed. Yeah, you know? right. Uh, so, they, you know, they've manifested that that reality. Um, how? And and that's what I love about Joe. He actually breaks down the how. Does it? The he science, down I know. How they do. Yeah. The that's, for me, my two things are that really, because I was the same way, like, it sounds like very similar, a very analytical thinker, right? Like it needs to make sense. I don't believe that, you know, yeah. two people were made out of clay and then magic happened or whatever the thing, you know, Adam and Eve. And granted, that's all, that's all like <laughs> your own yeah. interpretation of the text, whatever, whatever. But for me, it was the Japanese water experiment, which I'm sure you're familiar with, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. The Jap Mazumoto, I don't know how to say his name. Mazumoto, yeah. 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 And, and, and Joe Dispenza, you know, cause it's like, it takes science and shows you, no, 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 this is, this is real shit. This is, this is what we live in. This is, you know, and then it opens up the, the digging into everything. And what I found in my journey is there's a lot of woven layers of shit from childhood trauma and being in a place of, you know, it's essentially at the subconscious core not believing in myself you know and like i always had like a, a a slight coating of believing in that there is something divine there is something amazing that created everything but who knows what it is kind of thing right um but the, yeah. the part that i've done began working on is that belief in self and i think that ties a large part into being able to vibrate at a higher level. And a lot of your content has been super helpful to me, man. I got to tell you, you know, you're, you're doing, you're doing the good work. And I think that people like you and myself, not to toot my own horn, that put out all the nuggets, we're putting out the nuggets. You know what I mean? If someone wants mm. to work with us one-on-one, -on -one, it's because they resonate with us and, and they like the idea of having a coach in their corner and stuff. And, and then now you have an intimate relationship with that person. And I know for you and for for me, that's a transformative experience to have a coach. But at the same time, we're putting out all the gold that we know. We're not holding back. You know, I can go on your TikTok and watch all of your videos and learn fucking a shit ton about manifestation and implement it yeah. myself, you know. But having someone in your corner like yourself to, like, kind of walk you through it, I mean, is is pretty, pretty cool. And I got to say, um, part of my excitement of having this meeting with you is like you're my brother obviously you're my brothers phil i think you're i think your internet's playing up mate a little bit is that what that was yeah i yeah. totally forgot what i was saying there oh i was saying that i'm uh, i don't know if you heard that part or not but i was saying that like part of my excitement for getting to talk to you today is to be able to pick your brain about this stuff you know sure um you know it's like this is this is people pay good money for this you know what i mean 
Absolutely, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to share it as well. So, you know, um, you know, what you were touching on there is, you know, for me, I, I just show up and want to provide service, just want to provide value. You know, yeah. I, you know, for me, this is, this is, this is a passion. It's an interest, but it's my purpose. You know, I, mm-hmm. I actually, 2019, um, spent a lot of money going over to Toronto um i did this thing called pinpoint your purpose because i had that question still ringing in my ears from that uh, reflexologist saying you know who am i and i did this exercise it was a week long to, to establish my purpose in life and it's sort of drilling into your childhood and your traumas and how your parents were around you and you know how it's kind of conditioned you in your subconscious mind and whatever else and long story short i established my purpose in life was to and happily help and support others on their pursuit to secure their best life. And for literally two years, I had this purpose statement. I didn't really know what to do with it. Can you okay. can you hear me? Can you can hear me? Oh, did I freeze up? Yeah. Fuck. All right. It's all it's all good, mate. So yeah. No matter what, it's good to share space with you, man. Um, so. Yeah, we don't have to go down that road too much. I, I just, um, I guess I was really trying to dive in more like with your your research into manifestation. And I understand like how you kind of got there, but more so like how did your first few times of trying it go? Did you try with small stuff first? And then you're like, oh shit, it's working, you know? And then you started going bigger and bigger. Yeah, absolutely. So, um. I hope people ask me this all the time, like, you know, you can manifest more than one thing in one go, but, you know, why do that? Like, tr- just try and put your attention, intention on one thing at a time, you know? So, you know, people always want to manifest the big, big thing, but, you, you know, why not try and reverse engineer that and manifest the smaller stuff first as well? Because, you know, and I work with clients who, you know, might be wanting to manifest their dream house, but they're currently living in a one bed flat apartment, you know? And it's like, it's not I'm not saying that that's impossible because everything's possible and i'll talk about that in a minute in, in the fifth dimension but you know the problem is for a lot of people they're coming across uh they're coming into limit um you know resistance with their subconscious mind and their self-limiting beliefs so if they're trying to manifest anything that's either too big or from ego they're going to run into trouble so i always help my clients try and manifest more from soul's purpose for one and secondly from like a you know a six to eight month time frame you know, so you, you're just chopping up like the big manifestation because it make it can make it more believable actually because you, you know uh, you've, you've got to reprogram your subconscious mind right and the real the, the, the big one for me um last year which was sort of like really why i got onto tiktok and started sharing it was um i manifested the exact buyer the exact price for my house and um so my house went on the market last year and um my family and i my wife and her parents sat around a table and um, they said, let's try and guess who's going to buy the house. I said, we don't need to try and guess. I already know who's going to buy it. And they were like, how? And I was like, I've already visualized it in, in meditation, uh, created it. It's going to be a lady in her late 60s. She's going to be a cash buyer. She's going to she's going to go over the asking price. Uh, you know, this is going to happen. And the house went on the market the next day. And within two days, uh, a lady, a 67-year-old lady cash buyer bought the house for exactly the price I said. And uh, yeah, it went through within six weeks. So my I'm family sorry, at that what, point, what made you what made you pick the 60? Like, did you have a meditation and then that just came in or did you purposefully wish for that or manifest that? Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I just had this feeling that the house would suit, um, even though my wife and I were 28 and 29 at the time. I, I just felt like it would suit. Um, an, an older lady like it was a small sort of victorian cottage here in the, here in the uk and uh, even though like you know a younger couple could have bought it i just felt like it would have suited this lady. it just came to me like when it went in meditation and okay. i did the viewings and i i showed around six people and they were all different ages apart from this one one older lady who uh mm-hmm. well, shouldn't say older 67 but you know she suited the profile of what i'd already thought huh okay and uh yeah so so then, so then my family were like absolutely like uh, amazed by it, and they were like, "You really should now, like you, you know, you you've done all this yourself, and you're doing it for your family, but you should now really try and like help and impact." And that was like my sort of like my light bulb moment. I was like, "Yeah, I need to." I was doing, I was putting out my manif- manifestation stuff, but nowhere near at the level that I put out now, you know. Mm-hmm. And that, that was the start, right? 
So another quick story for you on that, because I still always manifest like the small stuff too. So one month ago, I uh, I was there and I was thinking about creating another smaller manifestation that I could manifest within a month. And um, I thought, wouldn't it be, you know, what do I want? Let's try and think from purpose and not ego here. OK, wouldn't it be cool? So you always should be in the lack stage first of manifestation. What do you want? What are you out of alignment with? Right? You should you, you should always be in the lack statement. What? You should be in lack of what you truly desire when you're getting clear on your intention and, and your intent. Yeah. So you're so you're in lack of what you desire. You've got to you've got to start in lack to know what you want. Right. Uh -huh. But so then, but then you shift the energy from lack to. Yeah. So, so here's, here's what I'm saying. So a month ago, I set the intention to try and manifest something from purpose. And I thought it would be cool to to um, to be invited to several podcasts. I've never been on a podcast before. So I put the intention out and then every single day I'd practice uh, being in perfect alignment to it emotionally and vibrationally through meditation. Right. And and then and then and then within no time at all, uh, one after the other podcast invitations started to come through. So I've received four invites to um, podcasts in the last few weeks. Yours is obviously one of them. Um, and if you go and check my latest TikTok video, I did a whole video on it today as well about how I manifested that. So it was an, an example. Yeah. So when you say you you like put the intention out for the podcast or you put your you envision the feeling of it, like how did you envision it? I guess. Can you describe that more? Yeah, sure. So, of course, I had no idea who would be inviting me on. So I couldn't imagine you, for example. I couldn't imagine, you know, the, the other hosts all i could feel was the emotion of how it would feel right because everything's energy in the in, in in the universe and we have to align ourselves to the emotional vibrational frequency of that desire or that intent mm -hmm. so all i could feel Phil, was how it would feel like to be on this on your podcast or a, a podcast uh you know um being you know having impact and you know being able to share what i what i know you know so so i could i could feel it and that's that's how i would show up every day just feeling like i was you know in possession of those emotions so you would envision the feeling of it and then kind of like make peace with it and let it go or do you stay there and marinate there for a while so the key really whenever you're manifesting is you don't want to get up from your, your manifestation until you can you, you feel like you've become that thing that you're looking to desire right now you know that's the key you know you can't just think about it here and there and then let go of it and carry on with the rest of your day so the idea is to go into a deep meditation until you get to that point the idea phil is to so so, so we live in 3d right right and if you get to a point in meditation where you become no one in no space and time and just become pure consciousness, you're knocking on the fourth dimension, right? Yeah, that's right. the that's, that's the door to the fifth. And when you get to the fourth dimension beyond time, and you're knocking on the door of the fifth dimension, you are infinite opportunities exist simultaneously there. So when when you get to that point, right, you you are drawing from that field that that desire. And and that's that's really what I that's what I set out to achieve every single day in meditation, becoming embodying that person right now, you know, feeling it right now, like changing my personality to change my personal reality. So when you manifested the podcast, is it like so did every day did you have a meditation where you went into that or was it one day that you had a manifest or meditation where you got to that that amazing space of alignment in your meditation? And then you were good, or did you do it every day? So, in all honesty, I I can get there pretty quickly now. So it only took me like probably four or five days of like I'm already it now. That's it. It's going to happen. Like completely surrendered to it. Like I've I've stepped into that person. They'll they'll just come now. You know, and uh, yeah, one after the other, these invitations just started coming in the, in in within this month. Mm -hmm. um, from 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 so TikTok, Instagram old colleagues who i used to work with messaging me about a friend's podcast like watch my last video on my tiktok today it's, okay it's it's crazy yeah and the key here is like i'd already be i'd already become it i'd already embodied it so i didn't need to continue like doing it does that make sense like i'd become that person i just knew it was going to happen and that's the key if you're following yeah i am um i might need to manifest some money to take to to hire you as my manifestation coach 
<laughs> go for it and you know that, that that's another thing you know that when i try and help people manifest like money or you know like you know like my coaching business now i haven't put one single video out really um pushing my coaching you know i, I mentioned it in one video i mentioned it but you know all i ever do is just show up with value and if you, if you can just serve and provide value money naturally hunts you down like to be honest and like i'm completely blessed by it i'm like getting to a point now where i'm so snowed under by the amount of clients that want to work with me it's just like wow but you know i've done like nothing to to, to to really get these clients they've just come to me but it's because phil my intention was to become this manifestation coach was to impact these people's lives and now i already feel like i am that person they're just coming to me when you do your uh meditations is is part of it like do you envision like you're almost viewing the the manifestation coach version of yourself like you're envisioning that per what would they do how would they walk and like you're kind of meeting them in your manifestation essentially and then becoming them through that sort of yeah yeah almost so i'm not imagining necessarily the the, the clients because i don't know who they are so to speak mm -hmm. what i'm doing is i'm manifesting uh, i'm drawing and creating my future version now like i'm bringing it in now right mm -hmm. you know so what people get wrong phil is like people want money they want a money they want to manifest money in abundance no 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 you don't want to manifest abundance you've got to become abundant <laughs> right mm -hmm. if, you, if you're if you manifest uh, becoming an abundant person right now you're going to attract abundance mm -hmm. you know and, and this 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 is this this huge sort of like switch because you've got to step into that person right now you know and once you do that and you, and you change your energy centers your chakras you create a different energy field right and you're just gonna you're just gonna attract that to you and that, that's really how it, how, how it works you know um and what's so cool about it is once you once you manifest it, you just keep moving the manifestation. You just write, okay, on to the next thing now. You know, let, let, let the next creation. It's this never ending game, which is just so cool. So, would you say that some of your clients are easier to get there than other than others, and and that the reason that might be is because of like how many woven layers of shit they have to work through their own belief in themselves? Like if they've if like I feel like for me. You know like comedians right like why did robin williams kill himself everybody thought he was a good dude right like on the outside i'm like hey i'm phil everybody but then like on the inside it's like you know i'm like a broken dude now granted i've done a lot of healing and i'm way further along this track than i've ever been and i'm super thankful but for me it seems like it's like a i do the work but it's like a little bit here and there a little bit a little bit a little bit and part of my mind is like i don't know if i'm aligned enough to manifest and like i don't know i mean maybe could i go to just one meditation and make something happen or do i need to get to where my resting state of vibration is at a certain point okay, despite, so the despite, despite meditation just my normal yeah. resting state so you know what I, the way i would answer that is if 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 you wanted to become a bodybuilder right now what would you have to do to become a bodybuilder you would have to show up every single day probably three four times a day in the gym you'd have to change your, your diet you'd have to start thinking differently you'd have to become the bodybuilder you you then if you right uh and this is what people uh, when they realize this, they're like of course like no wonder why i haven't been like manifesting no wonder why i haven't been changing you know they'll manif they'll meditate here and there they won't be consistent they'll journal once or twice a week they'll look at their vision board now and again do you think you'd be the bodybuilder if you just went to the gym here and there? No. Hey, change your diet. Sorry. So <laughs> it really is like for you, Phil, as well. You have to first get clear on the version of yourself that you want to become and then start acting like that person right now and become that person every like how badly do you want it? Like if you want it that badly, you got you just gotta become it, you know? And when you when you start becoming it and you start acting like that person that you want to be, you start changing your energy you know you start reprogramming your subconscious mind it's not going to happen overnight it's going to take at least two months on average to change your your, your habits your personal reality right and, and that really is the key so to answer your question yeah you know some some clients of mine take longer than others to get it you know i, I always start with a, a session i'm like how have you got on in the last week and some of them are like well you know i wasn't feeling that great on wednesday so i sort of skipped the meditation and 
you know so they're not seeing shifts whereas like one client of mine who's looking to man manifest money he's gone straight in like all in i had an email from him yesterday to say mate you're never going to guess what i had a a bank statement come through in the post that i completely forgot about with 300 pounds you know and um and it's because he's becoming an abundant person right now so he's manifesting like just money and opportunity from nowhere you know uh, but he's putting in the work you know he's sharing up time and time again to be this person you know how many times a day do you recommend meditating so i i i, I start every, i start my day with at least an hour an hour and a half of meditation um and i refuse to get up for meditation until i am i am the person that i'm desiring to become so you know and it's frustrating because sometimes i you know i'll sit there like yesterday i just couldn't get it phil I just couldn't i couldn't get it and it took me like an hour and a half to fully feel the elevated emotions of that desire now uh and then my wife she she meditates too like she she did her slightly later she said i had a really difficult meditation today like i couldn't quite get it you know so when you hear someone say that it's because there's no point just sitting there closing your eyes and listening to a guided meditation you've got it you've got to feel it you've got to trigger those emotions and so so yeah every day so um that, that was one of my questions right like there's plenty of and i've done those like 15 minute guided meditations and stuff that's most of what i've done um and and they're cool you know you come out of them feeling feeling okay etc and then like i've talked about on my channel you know i go to the pier in the morning first thing in the morning and i look off into nature and i think about what i'm grateful for and i really feel those emotions of gratitude and then i'll look at the birds and be like oh they're so beautiful and stuff and I have any lack thoughts, I just, nope, nope, nope. We're thinking about how positive, you know. And so I feel like that's a form of meditation, but I feel like you're talking about eyes closed, maybe some background healing frequency music, but that's fucking it. And you go within and you and you fucking stay in there until you so reach that. I mean, I can dive into now, like the, the 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 sort of science behind this, Phil. So, you know, you want to start your meditation off with breath work because what you want to be doing is you want to be releasing stored energy from those lower chakras, right? So you want to really sort of like get comfortable, and really as you breathe in, you want to be you want to be breathing in and sucking in your sort of like abdominal muscles. And the goal here is to be you know, sucking up your uh, spinal cord fluid to the top of your head, right? And the top of your head here is your pineal gland your, your third eye right? right now when you when you do the breath work and you breathe in like this and you you shift this fluid up you're you're you're, you're pushing on you're putting pressure inside your pineal gland where these little crystals are and the more you do that you can it's putting pressure on your pineal gland and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna eventually push you to a point where you have this sensory experience and you get beyond 3d so whenever you close your eyes you're actually getting beyond the five senses the five senses are what keep us in 3d but when you do this breath work first you're starting to trigger like your higher self right and the, the goal is to really get beyond phil is to get beyond your body your personality and then become just pure awareness pure consciousness so you're no longer identifying with phil and, and then from there you go into like a guided meditation so for me i do a lot of joe dispenser guided meditations on like you know the pineal gland or uh, you know elevated emotions and th th they tend to sort of last an hour some some of them longer right oh, okay and through that so sort of through the prep work first you're then able to then just as awareness really imagine that future so which is the intent and then practice how it would feel if you had that sort of manifestation right now and you're stepping into it right and that's 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 what i do and that's that's the level of man, uh, meditation that i would do on a daily basis so you're saying that you want to spend whatever five or ten minutes doing your own breath work and getting into that elevated state and then you put headphones in and listen to a longer meditation not one of these 10 15 minute ones but like an hour long deal yeah so so some of joe's meditations have the breath work prep first as well he'll guide you through the breath um but you know the, the breath's always a great anchor as well like to sort of you know have concentration on what you're doing when you when you when you when you are meditating so so yeah um some of those ones on youtube are cool but they're not going to give you the results that you're looking for right you know like any of joe's like week-long retreats like some of the people are spending six hours a day in those retreats in deep meditation, you know, and yeah. 
Yeah. This like, instant healing has been, been been seen. You know, people yeah. going into meditation, coming out and going from blind to being able to see, you know. And it's because they're plucking from 5D that 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 version of themselves which exists, you know. And I don't think people fully realize this, Phil, that every single possibility of of you exists in the 5D. Right, because there's infinite, infinite opportunities in every right. version possible. So you can create that version. You can pull it into 3D if you know how to get there. So I'm so my vantage point, right? Like I'm totally on board with the idea that you know I manifest my future self, what I have envisioned for my like do the do the meditate or meditating for that. Get there. Do it an hour a day. Kind of like your your gym metaphor, your your um, whatever yeah, weightlifter yeah. metaphor. Yeah. Like I'm on board with that. What about the type of meditation where it's like, you know, hey, I'm short on rent this month. I just want someone to send me a check for. I just want a check for fucking two grand or whatever. I want to manifest two grand. So now I'm going to do the same kind of meditation, but I'm now I'm now I'm thinking about how I'm going to feel when I get that two grand, I'm going to think about how, how the joy of, Oh, my rent's paid now. Okay. This is good. And like, and do that meditation. And then it's just going to pop up. Cause like creating the future version of myself, I get right. Like I'm going to start acting as that person. I'm going to start, like you're, you're building it right. Versus the type of meditation where it's like, I'm just trying to like straight up manifest something out of fucking thin air, essentially. Huh. Are you saying yeah. that it's like yeah. the same principle? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the problem is, Phil, like you, 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 you've said it right. There. Like, you, you know, whenever you want something, whenever you think you need something, you're not just like alignment with it. Right. You, you're just out of alignment to it. So, you, you know, for example, if, if I was looking to become that person who needed two thousand dollars to pay my rent, you know, I need to practice the emotions, the elevated emotions of what it would feel like right now to have that money, right? And, and that and that's it. And you know, you can you can do that in one meditation. And you know, things have instantly happened to me in the past, like within an hour, you know, like mm -hmm. so invested, you know. But th this is this is divine timing, you know. We create time in 3D. Mm -hmm. So we have to honor that and realize that. You know, we can't get frustrated with the universe if it doesn't just happen like that, you know, because, you know, we, we're operating in linear time that doesn't exist in 5D. So, so yeah, like, that's how I would do it. I'd still do exactly the same thing, you know. Um, but, if, but if by chance the the deadline comes and it hasn't manifested yet, it doesn't mean that it's not working. It just means that it's divine timing and, you, and you're not going to get it at that point. Yeah or whatever yeah Actually. you know and uh don't get me wrong like you know i'm not like a complete sort of like mystic and i manifest anything you know from there there's, there's been a lot of manifestations that haven't come to fruition for me but you know when i look at it there was resistance around it or you know my mindset wasn't quite there really if i look back or i didn't really believe it and sort of feel it um and i can look back with ease at the manifestations that haven't come to fruition and know why because it's coming from a place out of alignment nine times out of ten you know yeah like so i'm i'm super on board with the idea of hey you know if you're if you're in a spot where you're not happy with life and you feel and you're you're not getting money your jobs you're not happy and stuff like that you can manifest the life that you want by following these steps and stepping into that every day and really really dedicating to yourself like i'm on board with that principle but the the other like the other people that there's there's you know you know plenty of them. i forget this one guy's jake Ducey or something like that i don't know manifestation people that are on youtube you know and they lead you to believe that you know you can manifest fucking whatever you want and it can be there in a few days you know you just got to believe in it and sort of stuff and like that part is tough for me to get to get behind like so in that scenario i can manifest that two grand but it might be like way down the road it may not be in time for me to pay my rent versus if i'm manifesting my new life that i'm on board with because you can do the work meditation and stuff and it will align you etc you know i don't know I think, just, Phil, i'm not saying it's not possible i'm just saying that part's hard for me to process that yeah exactly and that's and that's why you'll struggle to manifest it it's simple as that fair right fair
if I, if you just watch back what you've just said there, you you from a from a you know we, I know we're just using it as an example, but you you were you were using your self limiting belief system to 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 confirm that manifesting two K instantly is just not going to happen. Right? Um, yeah. Yes. But this is what I was saying. People pay good money for this shit right here. Yeah, you just, exactly. You nailed it, dude. You nailed it. That's exactly so, right. So the key there, Phil, is actually very important because if you if you if you could feel it in every way possible that no, it's one hundred percent possible for two K to manifest, it would manifest, you know. But mm -hmm. the minute the subconscious comes in the way, the limiting belief system, you're out of alignment. So so Jody Spencer talks about an event. That a guy was broke, just got to the event, maxed his credit cards and everything, wanted a wanted to manifest two million dollars, practiced his meditations at the event, and at the event manifested two million dollars. See now, my old self is like, where did that money come from? Surely I, there was something in line that that money was coming in some way. I don't know where from. it came from, but you know, I believe Joe. When you know, and he, you know, he's he's also talking about how. Okay, so if we put money to one side, you know, he's talking about how people have gone with cancer to his events, right? And, and, and you know, and they they've come out of that, and they you know they've completely healed themselves. You know, the whole I think there's whenever it comes to like money and like manifesting, especially millions. You know, to me personally, I never manifest money. I never do because I think money is always a byproduct of like value and service anyway. So I'd never set the intention ever, ever to manifest like, um, you know, two million dollars. Like if I wanted to manifest a certain amount of money, I'd manifest a certain amount of uh, a certain amount of impact is what I would manifest because mm -hmm. impact equals money. So impact could yeah. be coaching. Coaching clients equals money, you know, and and, uh, and then it comes more for a purpose as well. But yeah, it is possible. Technically, it, it is possible to manifest uh, instantly. Yeah, it yeah. is. Uh, but but again, the problem with that, just to quickly cover that, is the reason it never really happens for most people is because they don't believe it will happen instantly or within like a short period of time. Yeah. So I think that long story short, um, for me, manifesting will become easier and easier the more I work on my subconscious layers and get rid of that limiting belief system that that general lack state that i've been in in the past and again i'm way further along that road to give you an example like i was yeah. the guy that like if i would accidentally drop something off my plate or stop my toe i was like motherfucker piece of shit you know like i was that guy right oh, well, okay. i see you've come a long way yeah dude and now it's like stuff happens like i was trying to get something off my bike and it was tangled up and normally i would like and i was like well you know i just kind of moved around stuff like i'm, I'm more calm and like I get the tinglies when I talk about good stuff and I have faith in everything, but I'm still like a closet, closet skeptic and lack person. And I'm just like working on that shit, you know, but I, yeah. I believe that the further along I go, it'll be easier and easier for me to, to manifest stuff. Exactly. And I think I, what I would say to you right now, like, you know, coming into this space is just practice becoming consciously aware of your unconscious thoughts. So even in meditation, right, the goal is to really, from the first starting, be the awareness of the thought. So when we're, when we're sat there, imagine like you're sat on the edge of a busy highway, right? And you're sat there and you've got this amazing lunch by you. You've got everything you'd want to eat and drink. And you want to be in that present moment. You want to just be there in that moment. But cars are going past, right? And they can be quite distracted. Now, what most people do with their thoughts is a car will go past like a thought and they'll attach themselves to the thought or the car and they'll go off and they'll be on this journey they've left the sweet spot the present moment where these lunches and this drink and everything else so the goal really like with meditation is just to be consciously aware so the cars are just going past the thoughts are just going past we'll let them carry on going past and the more you can sit there and be the awareness that's the sweet spot and if you recognize that you're drifting away just just pull yourself back and that there is when you realize you're not the cars you're not the thoughts you're the awareness you know and the more you keep doing that the more you'll get really good at it and you'll be able to completely eliminate thoughts that come in of you know of limitations or limiting beliefs or you know. and i'm assuming also the more you do that the more your your waking state of existence is reflective of that you're, you're not so bothered by random shit that happens in your world you just you're fully present, whether it's in meditation or just in a normal waking moment in your day. Yeah, I think for me, though, now, if something negative happens in my external world, which impacts 
me for me if that's out of my control you know well all i've got control of is my internal world always you know i'm in control of that no one else so if something happens externally i see it as a sign i see it as like surrendering to it like okay that what happened that happened for a reason maybe to teach me a lesson or and i just continue and i just don't i just don't give it too much attention because where attention goes energy flows and i want to keep that energy inside not outside you know fuck yeah fuck yeah i love that yeah, yeah. i'm 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 on board with divine timing um you know, and I know that there's people out there that are still stuck in victim mentality or whatever lower lower plane. And, you know, maybe they find their way, maybe they don't. And I was there for a very long time. Um, but like an older version of myself, if I was to tell him like, hey, no, nah, dude, like everything legit, everything is divine. Like every fucking thing that happens is divine. And like, mm -hmm. it's all good. It's all love. I'd be like, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like my my old version, but I'm I'm on board with it. Like my the the captain of this ship, right? The captain of this ship is like, yeah, I fucking get it now. This is this this is the way as the Mandalorian, like right. But then there's crew members. There's still miscellaneous crew members in here. They're like, nah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so it's like I gotta work. I'm working on like either weeding those guys out or hiring new help. You know, I don't know. But I'm I'm on the path, you know. And Once you're on the path, you'll never get. If you if you disciplined, you'll never get off it, you know. So and that's what go ahead. No, I can't remember. I was just gonna say. So one one last thing that I wanted to ask you, um, different from all that shit, right? Is did you have you had a point in your life that you by chance were uh, smoking the sweet cheaper? Yeah, absolutely. I have done in the past. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I actually had an experience in January this year. Uh, is it a space cake? Is that what you call it? Or, you know, it was in, it was in a cake. Um, uh, but I used cool. to smoke it a lot when I was younger, you know, when I was like 18, I'm 30 now. So, you know, a while ago, but I have, yeah. I have. So you've never been like a, there, there wasn't a point where you were like a slave to it, where it like ran your life or anything. No, no, no. no. My, mine have just been, I actually had in January an out of body experience from it. So it was more of a positive for me actually. Fuck yeah. Well, I, I say that a lot like in my message that like it's not it's not necessarily bad for us, but when we're in a state of lack and blah blah blah, and then you fucking put weed yeah. on that, that's not good. But someone like yourself who is on a path of enlightenment and you're aware of your body and you tap in and stuff, I can only imagine. That that I had a complete uh, yeah, I met um, extra. I met other dimensional beings. I I was shown what reality looks like. Um, you, you know, outside of three D. Uh, yeah, it was mental. It was crazy. Fuck! How long did it last for? Oh, um, it must have lasted like a good half an hour or so, at least, or maybe even an hour. Um, and it and I remember, and, and, and you know, and that's the, that's the other thing. An experience creates a memory and an emotion. So I can still remember it to this day. And it's exactly like going into 5D meditation. Like I can get to that state through meditation, but we just got me there like within like no time at all. Right. Cause, cause I just shut down from the 3D from the five senses and I was, I was taking that. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Like it's going to, it's going to emphasize your thoughts. It's going to emphasize who you are. So if you're smoking weed because you're depressed, it's just going to highlight that, isn't it? But for me, like you say, on this spiritual journey, it just took me to a whole new, a whole new place. You know? It's quite, yeah. quite unbelievable, really. Um, so, so have you um, in in normal meditation or in, in just whatever meditation, have you like had that kind of experience where you actually met like astral project, like um, that kind of stuff? Not as deep as that. And to be honest with you, you know, and again, I'm, I'm having to I don't I don't want to rely on something like that to get me there because I know meditation can get me there. So I've had very deep um, experiences through meditation. Nothing like that, though, taken and you know being with other beings and everything else. But I have had one experience where I fully connected with my mom on the other side. I, I don't know if you've, I can share that experience. Yeah. So so that was um, March 2019. And what happened, Phil, was I was uh, it was about 10 o'clock at night. My wife and I were lying in bed. We had the laptop watching Netflix. And um, I said to my wife, I'm just going to turn over now. She wanted to carry on watching whatever. And I was still wide awake, but sort of sleepy, I suppose you could say, but, but awake. And as I turned over and just lay there, my whole entire body started to vibrate. 
never felt anything like it before whole body to a point where if i wanted to i could definitely have um ho hovered off the bed like that's what it felt like right you weren't you weren't purposefully meditating this just happened I was doing, I was doing nothing because he's going to get onto this which is really interesting about why this happened i then heard high pitch ringing in my ears it then went completely silent i could have heard a pin drop you know and then my mom came through and she went hi matt it's mom can you hear me how are you and i went yeah hi mom i'm here like you know we just started talking and uh my wife nudged me because she was still awake and she was like who are you talking to and it completely like dropped me out of it and what happened right because i've done loads of research after that is um you know and i've connected with my mom a few times since is that we are on the 3D in a very um, condensed form of energy and vibration, a slow rate of vibration. The human body is just a slow rate of condensed vibration and energy. When we ascend after death, our soul just goes through to the realm of existence. It's just a pure form of energy vibrating at a higher frequency, right? So what my mom was able to do, is she lowered her energy and her vibration. I raised my energy and my vibration. That's why my body vibrated. We met on, a, on the same plane of existence and we were able to connect. And, um, you know, I've had mediums confirm to me that, you know, that's sort of what you do. It's like tuning into a radio station. Like my mom and I tuned into the same frequency to, to sort of, you know, be able to talk. Um, but the key there is I didn't do it consciously. You know, it happened beyond me. You know, I went beyond my senses. I went to a different realm, if that makes sense. So I don't know why and how that happened. It just happened. Whether my mom triggered it, I don't know. Um, but the more you try for that experience to happen, it won't happen because you're trying to do it through the body in 3D and you can't do it from 3D, you know. So when you when you met with her, did, like, does, does she like in that realm? Does it look like her? Is she wearing clothes? So I could. So. So, for, yes, um, it's really weird because for me, it was like I could see her facial sort of. Uh, it's so weird because you you can't actually describe. It doesn't exist in in this world to even be able to explain what it looks like. It's very very weird to explain, but it was like I could see like this outline of her. I could see I could see her face. I couldn't even really tell you what she looked like underneath, but really it was just the fact that I could hear her, you know, and and and, and like I could recognise her accent and where she's from. Like she she was from like near London in the UK, so she had a we call it a Cockney accent. You know, it's like very, you know, you you know someone who's from like London, Cockney accent. So like it was like bizarre. It was like wow, I haven't heard this voice in nearly two years, and you know, it was just so profound, really. You know, um, yeah, it's crazy. So um, my my belief in all that stuff is is kind of loose, and I know there's, I'm on the right track, I think, but like essentially that I have a higher being right i have a higher being that's like my higher self or whatever and that and just tell me your your interpretation in a second but that 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 being has lived multiple lives and will continue to live multiple lives and perhaps some of those lives are not on earth some of them are and maybe they're in another galaxy and with some other shit going on who fucking knows right Absolutely. and that that higher being is always there so like like when I die, it's like I become that, right? A little bit. But then like another piece of me is off over here doing this. So it's like you never really die. It's just like you're in like a simulation almost. And then when this where you learn, you learn in the simulation. And then when you when you die, you pull out, but you're also doing it. I don't know. Am I on to something? Yeah, you are. So so you need to read A Journey of Souls and Destiny of Souls by Michael right. Newton. Yeah. it's going to tell you exactly what it, what it is but okay but, but basically you you don't carry all of your energy into your earthly incarnation right so there'll be a percentage of your energy still in the other realm uh -huh. the reason for that is your human body wouldn't just would just explode it would just too powerful so you only take a percentage of your energy with you on that incarnation that would mean that there's a percentage of you still there with your soul cluster and your guides it also means that there's probably maybe another percentage of you um, on another planet or maybe even here. Like, you know, th there could be another person on Earth with your fraction, a uh, percentage of your soul. So you've got the same soul, you know, but you're just in another body. Um, so, yeah, when you when you pass over, you're met by your guides. 
you know you're you're guided you know to to, to sort of you know um back back to your soul cluster but there's a there's a process first depending on how you pass over you know if, if it's instant death you might you might not know you've died and it might take more encouragement for you to be guided across um different people like if you're more of like an advanced soul and an older soul you might just want to progress back to your soul cluster sooner most most souls when they pass might spend some time around family members to make sure that they're comfort comfort uh, kept, you know warm and close and that's why when people die they'll sort of have an encounter with a loved one pretty soon you know around their funeral um you know you hear that a lot and that's because the soul will always stay around and comfort loved ones they might even watch their own funeral and then be guided back across and also remember that time is a made up construct in the 3d so for a soul to stick around for a few weeks like it's like nothing you know and then they're guided back so um you've depending on the age of your soul and how advanced you are you could have lived thousands of incarnations on earth already you know um everyone with a purpose to evolve spiritually and grow and learn and you know learn to be whole and love um and then you'll go and you'll review your life you'll review your most recent incarnation with your guides and your soul cluster group and you'll um look at what mistakes you made but you always look at your life from the perspective of everyone else never yourself because i only know phil from the way i perceive you and so does everyone else around you so you'll view yourself from the perspective of everyone else not uh -huh. just, you know and then um you know the, the goal is to sort of evolve become more advanced maybe become a guide yourself to other souls uh uh, you know it's a very long process it can take thousands and thousands of human years to even become like that advanced you know so it's a very i, I that's another part of me that i'm quite knowledgeable in as well as you can hear so. yeah so let me uh throw uh one more question on in i know i know you probably have more more it's, calls to get, get on to or what, whatever um so on that note i've heard many different people say you know something to the effect of we are the universe experiencing itself in this whatever right so when you say that i'm thinking and i hear what you're saying like there may be other beings here that have a part of my soul cluster and they're like my fucking soul person or whatever here but does that mean so is it where all souls are essentially the same fucking being or like is it a no. bunch of different souls? I, I want to believe that it's a bunch of different soul clusters it that is. all have their own. And like, yes. and like, when I pass on, do I have a sense of humor up there? Yeah, they joke still. They they party. They dance. The only thing souls miss, Phil, is the human experience, right? So they no want, sex. They, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. They want no they sex. Want, no well no they can actually but in their own way it's like more of like an energetic sort of sex you know it's not like uh i can't like, grab on to some titties anymore no and that's what souls miss after a period of time like they, they miss the human like five senses essentially so then they pop back down and have a go at it they basically they can they, yeah like you know that that's the whole purpose so a soul can you know they can recreate like any event like any any memory but they they're never going to have the full sensory experience of a human you know and that's why they look forward to after a period of time coming back down but to answer your question so there's two ways to look at this really yes every soul is unique in its own way so so you would uh, you would um, your soul cluster group might range from like a few souls to maybe 10 12 20 souls and those souls are going to be souls that have always been with you, right? So in other lives, so for example, your brother might have been your cousin in a past life. Your dad might have been your grandfather. Um, you know, so, so like your best friend might have been your sister in another life. Mm -hmm. uh, and these and these are the people that you'll meet on the other side. Now, not necessarily like, so for example, like your mother or father might not be in your cluster. They might be in a cluster that's nearby. You know, and this is all broken down and explained in, in Michael Newton's book, so just Destiny and Journey of Souls. Read Journey of Souls first. Okay. Um, and to, to answer your question about are we all one, we all originate from source. So we are all one, really. We've uh -huh. all originated from the same place. But, you know, that's then broken down into individual fragments of energy, which are souls. And then. OK, last question. Yeah. What do you believe is happening in our world now? I mean, I know that 
there's people that talk about we're we're ascending into a different dimension, the age of the Aquarius and stuff. But then you also look and you see, you know, well, if you look at the news, which I don't fucking watch the news anymore, but you know, people talk about, well, what about this going on? What about this going on? Like, are we are we nearing the end of something? Or do you have any any insight on uh, what your what your belief is there? What's going on? I do. I think that we are evolving. Um, we're we're definitely evolving, and I think that there's there's certain souls here now to raise consciousness. You know, and uh, enlighten people um, to help them evolve to whether it's another realm or another earth or whatever. But this has been happening since the fifties. You know, and if you if if you list if you read Dolores Cannon, um, um, oh, volunteer yeah the three the three waves of volunteers in the new earth she's she's been documented since like whenever since the 50s souls have been um you know volunteering to come to earth souls from other planets or souls that are you know um you know just just, just they operate on a higher frequency to raise earth's vibrational frequency and that's what it is so you know and the power of social media the power of being able to spread it, it helps doesn't it? it helps evolve consciousness because 50 years ago or even 10 20 years ago without social media it was governed like what people knew and listened to and what they were taught but i think we're definitely on this edge now where you know um consciousness is evolving because of that that's my belief and i think you know really the goal is to and it's going to take a hell of a long time but you know for, for everyone just to be in love right and just there just be no war no crimes no hate you know, and just operate on a higher vibration. Yeah. So you're you're not concerned about like, because it is all divine, right? Regardless of whatever, you're not concerned about new world order and one currency and what all the governments are doing. Even though they're all fucking shitty people, obviously. But you know, I don't let that stuff. Well, not all of them. Not all yeah. of them, but a lot of um, them. I just don't I just don't let that concern me. I mean, that's just another side of my life. You know, you know, I invest in crypto. I, I understand the, the the new order. I understand the new um, digital system that they're trying to implement. I understand all that. But I just I just don't try and operate from that level, really, because you're operating from such a lower form of vibration when you try and get involved in any of that stuff. And I'm just like, do you know what? Like, I'm just here having this fucking experience and whatever happens exter externally i don't really care to be honest i'm just going to go yeah. in the ride and yeah. you know try and have fun and make an impact along the way and fuck what happened outside and you know, that's sort of my attitude really so yeah yeah so i would like to um hop pop off and talk to you for a few more seconds after this but i wanted to say something in closing and you feel free to say something too um and that is that for people who who happen to have made it this far and are having a hard time wrapping their head around all this or, or getting to a point of believing it, what's helped me get to the point of believing it is learning about the ego, reading Eckhart Tolle or Tolle or whatever, getting a more clear understanding and acceptance, radical responsibility for the fact that we have been conditioned to think a certain way. And the ego is a real thing. And it's not just meaning that some person is pompous, et cetera. There's more to it than that. Yeah. Um, and, and on that note, if if we can understand and disconnect from the ego then why isn't any of this possible you know like it's it's all fucking possible the only reason that people have a hard time grasping their head around it is because of the conditioning that they've gone through in this existence and that's just you know we, we're not we're not supposed to understand it it's fucking ants trying to understand algebra you know correct you know? And, yeah. and and we're blessed to have people like yourself and now i believe myself as well even though you're fucking like you're in that shit and i love it brother but to, to be able to help others guide and and i agree with you i've said for a long time that no matter what you believe no matter what dogmatic religion it is it doesn't matter if it is or isn't the one thing that seems pretty common is that this is soul school in some mm. form we are in soul school and there is magic but you have to believe in the magic to see it absolutely absolutely like just just my 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 honest thoughts on this is if someone's here right now watching to the end of the podcast there's no such thing as a coincidence they're here for a reason you know um 
lean into it, lean into the unknown. You know, great things happen on the edge of the unknown and, you, you know, interfere. And the reason for that is you're going against the egoic mind. You know, the egoic mind, the subconscious mind always wants to return to the familiar past and what it knows because it only operates from the past. You know, if the average human thinks 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day and 90 percent are from the past, then it's natural for you to learn something new and go, I don't believe this or it's scary. I don't want to lean into spirituality. It's beyond what I'm used to. That's the egoic mind sort of just wanting to return you to sort of safety. But really, growth is on the other on the, the other side of that, the, the door. You've got to open the door. And, you know, it's a safe place. Like, you know, you can't you can't make mistakes learning this. Like, do you know what I mean? So, um, I, I, yeah, just start. Just go with the flow. Like, start with the basics. Explore it. It's such a wonderful place, you know. And that's in four years where I've got, you know. So. Yeah. And if nothing else, follow uh, Matt Cook on, on TikTok. What's your tiktok i put this on youtube what's your tiktok handle and do you have a youtube it's just matt cook underscore on tiktok if you just type matt cook manifestation i'll come up on tiktok um i have got a youtube channel as well matt cook but to be honest it's for it, I, I am actually stepping into a place where i'm going to be putting more content out on other channels i just wanted to focus on one thing first uh, and I focused on growing my TikTok to where it is now, building a, a successful coaching business from it. And now I'm at a point where I want more impact. And that's why I'm on podcasts. That's why I'm going to be building up my YouTube long form content, my Instagram as well. But TikTok, the reason I chose that as the first place is because it's the best platform in the world to grow organically. It's hands down. Huh, yes, it is. I mean, <laughs> there's no question about that, dude. I was on uh, YouTube for, I've been, rather, I've been on YouTube now for about three years. And I'm just now crossed over uh, 800 subscribers. Now, granted, there was periods of time there that I wasn't doing it consistently and I wasn't really following the deal. But yeah, dude, TikTok, holy shit, man. As long yeah. as you like understand the core principles of like, you know, what what kind of content they want you to upload in terms of fitting into their algorithm, the formula, you know, starting the video with a catchy line or whatever the fuck it is and having a good message. Yeah. You know, that or shaking your ass if you, you know, if you're, you know, whatever. It, it change your life, you know, and it, it will yeah. change your life. Yeah. It's changed ours. So, yeah. Uh, and that's that's why. But I am on YouTube too. So, so yeah. Sweet, man. All right, Matt. I'm going to stop the recording, but I'd like to spend like maybe five more minutes with you if that's cool. Of course you can, mate. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for watching as well. All right. Thanks, guys. Trust you,